This is a 3D printed lockbox with a design inspired by bank vault doors. Featuring a lever tumbler lock mechanism, this vault ensures that only someone with the correct key can gain access to whatever you choose to store inside. From the inception of this design, I focused on two primary objectives. To create a vault that is entirely 3D printed, and to ensure that it remains compact enough for smaller printers such as the Prusa Mini. The design files are available for free on Printables and MakerWorld, allowing anyone with access to a 3D printer to create their own version of this vault. Aside from some adhesive, this design is composed solely of 3D printed components, eliminating the need for metal dowels or bearings. A significant amount of effort was devoted to simplifying the assembly process, making this project accessible to anybody with access to a 3D printer, regardless of experience level. The vault is available in two sizes, standard and jumbo. While the jumbo version still fits on smaller printers, it does push the build volume to its limits. This project is actually my second attempt at creating a fully printed vault with a functional lock. My initial design featured a round door, but it became clear that the mechanism faced excessive friction due to the complexity of having numerous gears and moving parts. Although this design ultimately failed, the lock itself operated pretty well, so I redesigned the vault mechanism, which turned into my last project. In this iteration, I reused the locking mechanism but opted for a rectangular door design with only three gears. This adjustment significantly enhances the smoothness of the locking mechanism. Now, let me guide you through the assembly process and show you how everything fits together. I'll start the assembly by showing how the lock works. As I mentioned before, this is a lever tumbler lock. The green pieces are the levers, and each one has a cutout known as a gate. Each lever must be lifted to the correct height in order for the bolt, which is a red piece, to slide back and forth. Putting the lock together is very easy. The parts just stack, starting with the bolt, which is covered by a spacer with a bendable arm to push down on the levers. Each lever has an indent indicating the order of installation, so lever number one goes in first, then number two, and number three is last. There's a brown spacer between each lever, so everything should just stack up and the lock will be done. After that, we need to glue the lock to the back of the door frame. I printed the door frame in two colors, but it's just a single layer color change, so no AMS is required. The lock body has three pegs on the top, which align with three indents on the back of the door. Just add some glue to the pegs and around the perimeter of the lock body and push the pieces together. There's a hole in the front of the door frame, which provides an opening to the lock, and currently we can see that the red bolt is visible and partially blocking the opening. If we insert the key and turn, the red bolt slides away, leaving the opening clear. When the red bolt is visible, that means that the door would be locked. The center gear has an arm which extends into that hole and can only rotate when the bolt is not blocking the way. This is how the lock interacts with the vault door mechanism. We'll come back to the center gear in a bit, but the next step in the assembly process is adding the two outer gears. Each gear has a cutout on the bottom, which aligns with pegs in the door frame and limit their rotation to about 90 degrees. Both gears are the same, but we want to insert them with the lower set of gear teeth oriented towards the center of the door. With the gears in place, I added some glue to the door frame and added on these other frame pieces to hold the gears down. Next we're going to start assembling the vault mechanism. Start by making sure the door is locked, so the red bolt is visible. Then rotate the outer two gears clockwise as far as they'll go. Then add the center gear, making sure the arm extends into the little opening, which is now partially blocked by the red bolt. Now we can start adding the racks, which are made up of multiple pieces which I glued together earlier. I recommend rotating the center gear counterclockwise as far as it'll go. This puts the gears in the extended position, meaning the racks would be extended and the door would be locked. With this in mind, I'll add the racks in the extended position and the gear teeth line up perfectly. Do this for the other racks and test it out to make sure everything's working properly. The frame cap goes on next and it will secure all of the racks to the door. There are four indents in the corners of the door frame which align with four pegs on the frame cap. So just add some glue into the indents and press the pieces together. 
It's a good idea to clamp the corners while the glue sets, but it's not strictly necessary if you don't have any clamps available. While that glue dries, I'm going to add the keycap, which keeps the center gear attached. I added some glue into the little recesses flanking the keyhole. This takes a bit of care, but it's not challenging. The keycap has two prongs which fit into the door frame, and this can be a bit tricky to get aligned, but I discovered a trick where you can just use the key to help line it up. Speaking of keys, I would like to thank the sponsor of today's video, PCBWay. PCBWay offers every service you could ever need for your projects. From custom PCBs to CNC services to 3D printing any material you can ever imagine, PCBWay is the best place to help take your projects to another level. For this project, I decided to 3D print a few keys out of metal, and if you saw my last video, you'll know that I already have stainless steel and aluminum keys, so I decided to try out tool steel and titanium, which came out great. Thank you to PCBWay for supporting this video. Next, we're going to add the hinges to the door. These print in two pieces which slide together to create a strong connection, and I glued them together earlier. I just add some glue into the recess in the hinge piece, then add a drop onto the frame cap, and press it into place, making sure that it's making good contact. Follow the same process to connect the other hinge piece. To connect the handle brackets, we follow a similar process. We just add a generous glob of glue into the recesses in the frame and press the brackets into place. Next I'm going to take the hinge straps and place them onto the hinge pieces which we just secured to the door. Place all four straps onto the hinges, making sure they're pushed all the way in. Then take the jam and add generous amounts of glue into the four holes. We need this to be a strong connection because it's going to carry all the way to the door when it's opened. The next step might be the trickiest part of the entire assembly. We need to get the four hinge straps into the four holes in the jam. I found it's easiest to get all the straps facing the same direction, then tilt them into the holes in the jam and delicately guide each one until they're all aligned. Once they're connected, set the entire thing down to dry, and while it's drying, we're going to take the handle and glue it into place. This door is now complete and we just need to add it to the box. I'm using the standard size box, but as I mentioned at the start of the video, there is a jumbo version available also. The box has my name on the bottom and there are a few recesses for rubber feet if you have some laying around. The box has six pegs which align with openings in the back of the jam, so just add a bunch of glue and press them together. So there we have it. This vault is now complete and it works perfectly. There are two additional steps which are completely optional, but they involve non-printed parts so I don't consider them part of the official design. First, I added some weights to the bottom of the box and a false bottom to give the base enough weight to prevent the entire thing from tipping over when it's empty. And second, I added four rubber feet. Overall, I am very pleased with this design, and I hope some of you will want to build one of these for yourself. If you're still watching, please give this video a like and consider subscribing if you would like to see more videos like this in the future. Thanks for watching.